Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, U.S. President Donald Trump, ahead of a meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, declares his administration was giving peace between Israel and the Palestinians an absolute go, believing there is a good chance for both sides to reach an agreement. Washington announces that even though it views Syrian President Bashar Assad as illegitimate, it is up to the Syrian people to decide who the leader should be. Iraq's Kurdish leader Masoud Barzani vows to press ahead with a referendum on Kurdish independence scheduled to take place on the 25th of September that, despite a vote by Iraq's parliament to reject the move and take all measures necessary to preserve Iraq's unity. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a meeting last night in New York City with U.S. President Donald Trump, during which the two leaders discussed regional challenges, including the growing threats posed to Israel by the Islamic Republic of Iran and its proxies, Washington's aspirations to restart the long-stalled negotiations for Israel and the Palestinians, as well as the fight against the Islamic State across the region. Ahead of their meeting, which lasted about one hour, both leaders reaffirmed the strong alliance between Washington and Jerusalem, which both Netanyahu and Trump emphasized was stronger than ever under the Trump administration. I want to say that under your leadership, the alliance between America and Israel has never been stronger, never been deeper. Um, I can say this in ways that people see and in ways that they don't see. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to say that under President Trump, America's position towards Israel at the UN has been unequivocal. It's been strong. It's got both clarity and conviction. And I want to thank you on behalf of the people of Israel and Israel's many friends around the world. Thank you, Mr. President. President Donald Trump took the opportunity to emphasize that his administration was giving peace between Israel and the Palestinians an absolute go, believing there is a good chance for both sides to reach an agreement. Peace between the Palestinians and Israel would be a fantastic achievement. And we, we are giving it an absolute go. I think there's a good chance that it could happen. Most people would say there's no chance whatsoever. I actually think with the capability of, of Bibi and, frankly, the other side, I really think we have a chance. I think Israel would like to see it, and I think the Palestinians would like to see it. And I can tell you that the Trump administration would like to see it. So we're working very hard on it. We'll see what happens. The comments by President Trump did not impress the Palestinian leadership. However, the American leader is due to meet with his Palestinian counterpart Mahmoud Abbas later today. A senior Palestinian source assessed that no political breakthrough was likely as the Trump administration had still not formulated a concrete plan for resuming the long stall negotiations and did not have a clear vision on the issue. Meanwhile, it should be noted that the two of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's close advisors were seen speaking at length with Israel's coordinator of government activities in the territories, Major General Yoav Mordechai, at an annual conference of Palestinian Authority donor states in New York. Now to another meeting that took place on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi in what was their first public meeting since the Egyptian leader took office in 2014. A statement from Netanyahu's office said the meeting held at the Palace Hotel, where el-Sisi is staying while in New York, was comprehensive and dealt with the problems in the region. According to a statement from el-Sisi's office, the Egyptian president stressed the importance of renewing peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians in order to reach a just solution based on the idea of two states for two peoples. The Egyptian statement also noted that Netanyahu expressed his appreciation to el-Sisi for Cairo's important role in the Middle East, its fight against terrorism and its efforts to achieve stability and peace in the chaotic region. 
Earlier in the day, President el-Sisi met with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to discuss attempts to jumpstart the peace process with Israel, as well as efforts to achieve internal Palestinian reconciliation between Abbas's Western-backed Palestinian Authority and the Islamist Hamas organization, which controls the Gaza Strip. Now to Israel's northern neighbor, where Syrian government troops reportedly crossed to the eastern side of the Euphrates River near Deir el-Zur for the first time in their offensive against the Islamic State. После крупной победы под Дейр-Зором, сирийская правительственная армия продолжает зачистку от террористов ИГИЛ восточных районов страны. Освобождены пригороды этого провинциального центра, передовые части успешно форсировали э, реку Ефрат, закрепились на ее восточном берегу. The advance by the Syrian army is the latest in what the Russian Defense Ministry declared was a successful bid to provide President Bashar Assad with control of most of the war-torn country. The successful advance by the Syrian army of President Bashar Assad has changed the vocal statement towards the Syrian regime, which even though still is perceived by Washington as illegitimate, Western officials declared that it was up to the Syrian people to decide who the leader should be. We've made clear many times that we do not believe at the end of this process uh, that Assad should remain, that he has lost his legitimacy and his right to rule. But that is a decision for the Syrian people to make. That is the outcome of the process. The process itself has to begin, has to be launched. The American undersecretary emphasized, however, that even though the Syrian population was responsible to choose its own leadership, it must be done under the auspices of the United Nations to assure that the political end state is achieved. We have made the U.S. and many of the parties in the room who can speak for themselves and make clear their view that at the end of the day, uh, we do not believe that the majority of the Syrian people wish to see Bashar al-Assad uh, continue in power. Uh, the U.S. view is he has lost his legitimacy, he has lost his right to be in power. But that is the product, the end state of a political process. And it's the launch of the political process that has to begin now that takes you, takes Syrians to that end state. However the end state is achieved through whatever modalities or means, it's the process that has to be the focus. Now in Geneva is the place where that process under UN auspices uh, now needs to really take life. Now to Iraq, where the country's Kurdish leader, Masoud Barazani, vowed to press ahead with a referendum on Kurdish independence scheduled to take place on the 25th of September, that despite a vote by Iraq's parliament to reject the move. The declaration by Barazani comes after Iraq's parliament in the capital Baghdad authorized the prime minister of the country's central government to take all measures necessary to preserve Iraq's unity, as Iraqi lawmakers worry that a Kurdish referendum will consolidate Kurdish control over several areas claimed by both the central government in Baghdad and the autonomous KRG in northern Iraq, regions rich with oil. The Kurdish lawmakers, however, rejected the parliament decision and walked out of the session before the vote. It is important to note that Western powers fear a referendum in Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region, including the oil-rich city of Kirkuk, could ignite a conflict with the central government in Baghdad and divert attention from the war against the Islamic State. Thank you for joining us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any updates from Israel and its region, visit our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps.
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.